Thank you, Madam Speaker. To the motion. To the motion. Madam Speaker, House Bill 2060 has many laudable parts. Grant funding to help students with mental and behavioral health issues, increasing instructional time for students who may have particular needs, such as foster children, students from low-income families, and students whose first language may not be English, grants for arts and music and literacy programs, and a whole range of other wonderful ideas. That's why House Bill 2060 passed out of the House Education Committee with bipartisan support. All of these positive ideas with bipartisan support are now thrown into question by one line in this bill that has been glossed over. If it was mentioned at all by the Oregon Department of Education, Director Gill and his staff. Line three of page one of House Bill 2060 states, repeal ORS 30.864. Allow me to read the statute, Madam Speaker. It is brief. I quote, any person claiming to be aggrieved by the reckless disclosure of personally identifiable information from a student's education records as prohibited by standards issued by the State Board of Education or the governing board of a public university listed in ORS 352.002 may file a civil action in cir circuit court for equitable relief or subject to the terms and conditions of ORS 30. Uh, 265 or 30.300 for damages or both. The court may order such other relief as may be appropriate. The action authorized by this section shall be filed within two years of the alleged unlawful disclosure. In an action brought under this section, the court may allow the prevailing party costs, disbursements, and reasonable attorney fees, end quote. Now, historically, we've seen hundreds of lines within bills that repeal various statutes. We rely on the agencies or the members who sponsor the bills to explain the ramifications, positive and negative, of their proposed legislation. The governor who proposed this legislation and the Department of Education on whose behalf the bill was introduced owe the House Education Committee an explanation. The bill would purpose to make impossible for a student to seek legal relief if they are raped on campus and their name is recklessly publicized by university staff, or if a student athlete reports sexual harassment and their personal information is recklessly released. Let me again emphasize the term reckless. For those of us who aren't lawyers, reckless in terms of tort law would mean that a person willingly takes an initial action that a reasonable person would know will likely lead to the act being committed. In plain language, they do it on purpose. Not only accident, not a slip up, not sending out the wrong email to the wrong person, on purpose. For this body to pass a law removing the right to seek justice if a student's name and personal information is released, but the state on purpose after they reported abuse, rape, or harassment is totally unacceptable, especially in the light of the work the legislature has done just recently to make sure all victims are heard and respected. Madam Speaker, colleagues, please give us a chance to take this bill back to committee to fix it. It's a good bill and it'll do much good for many people, especially students who are traditionally underserved, students of color, and low-income students. We need to hear from the governor and the Department of Education to explain why this poison pill was placed in an otherwise good piece of legislation and why it wasn't brought to the attention of the committee. We need as many voices as possible to be consulted now that this new information has been brought to light. Victims advocates, student advocates, teacher advocates, representatives from associations of attorneys and parents groups, college students themselves and others who ha have a right to be consulted. All of these and more should be allowed to make their voices heard now that the repercussions of the repeal of this statute have been made known. We need to pause and make sure that we don't do irreparable damage to the lives of victims while we're trying to better the lives of other students. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I urge and I vote on the motion.